G'day, I'm Elijah Tichborn. Today we're gonna to go through the setup for the A7S, the original A7S. We're gonna show you how to navigate the menu system and get you guys set up for video and photo. So first off, what we need to do is chuck the battery in. So all that is, is we turn it over. There's a little latch here. Flick that latch open. A little latch right here. Flick that open. Uh, you got little contacts right there. Those contacts need to go on the outside, okay? Not inside, but the outside, like that. Slot it in. As you push it in, that little blue latch will flick over. So to get it all, to get the battery out, you just gotta flick that latch and that battery come loose. But we want that in, so let's just keep that in. Turn that over again. Click that latch so it's closed. Now we've got, oh, so it's off the latch, the on button is in the off position. See that? On, off, right there. What we're gonna do is click that in the on position, like that. And that will turn on, off, on. And then we just go through and set up the area date time so click enter so to click enter it's just this middle button right here All right, let me just get that better right there that's the on button oh that's the okay button so click okay or enter and i'm in australia so just, oh, to, to navigate here all i'm doing so to go right just click on the right side so where it says wb which is white balance and then to go left, just click down on this side where it's got the little uh, timer button or the shutter, the shutter amount. So just click over and then when you're happy where whatever country you're at, then you click OK. So the middle button again. OK. OK, so now we've got the, uh, yeah, the actual date time set up. So data savings is off for me. And so you just go okay again to click on the date and time. Um, so the date and time is, what is it set up as? So it's set up as the days first. So what is the date today? It is the fourth. So we go four and then click across. So we click right on that WB to click across again. Okay, so it, what day is it now? It's the sec, no, yeah. Whoops, it's, yeah, so it's the second of the month, so it's February. And then it is 2022. Time, what is this set up as 24 hours? So you just click whatever the time is. And you can change the format of the day, month, year, or month, day, year, whatever you want to click. I, I run by this. Click down to enter to, to confirm. Okay, and then uh, okay for that. So we want to go menu up here, right here is the menu button. Click menu. Now each page has, or each each uh, menu has pages. So this is the camera menu, camera setup menu. We've got eight pages, so we can cruise across, and then we've got the settings. That's got seven pages. Connectivity got two pages, apps, one page. Um, viewing has got two pages. Toolbox page has got six pages. So let's start with the camera setup. Okay, so we'll get it set up for, um, we'll get it set up for photo. So to set up for photo, what we need to do is, at the top we've got this little wheel, okay? And it, at the moment it's set to video. So what we wanna do is put that, if we wanna go to photo, Let's just put that on manual because we want to shoot manually for photos. Okay, so let's set up the photo section. We'll go menu. Okay, let's set that up for photo. So we're on the first page of the camera settings, camera menu. Um, aspect ratio, three by two. So you can go into that. So to go into the actual menu, you just click the OK button to click into that. All right, so we've got 16 by nine or three by two. 16 by nine is just a crop of the three by two. So we'll just keep it to the true ratio is three by two. 
Uh, raw, so you've got different options here. You've got raw and JPEG, extra fine, fine, standard. So these are just JPEG files, right? Or you can go raw and a JPEG, just go raw. I advise just go raw. Um, it's just because you've got more control because what raw gives you is just gives you more data. Uh, so you can control the highlights and the shadows. So if you're shooting and you're losing details and like you're losing um, information in the shadows, you can actually go into your uh, Lightroom and bring up the shadows a lot more. And with your highlights, you can bring down the highlights to get the information back. You can't really do that with JPEG, you, as it doesn't retain any information in the highlights of the shadows. So we shoot raw. So these are bigger file sizes. Uh, you can do more with it. Uh, so we can crawl, uh, scroll down to format file. So this is the video um, format. Um, so the video is set at XAVC S, AVC HD, or MP4. The highest quality one is this one. Uh, go to the next option. Page two is recording settings. So for video. So if you were going to go for video, you would set this at the video setting right there. See, it says a video. So if, if you were going to use video, but we're setting up for photo. So let's go back to that menu again. So if we're going to go uh, video shooting, we've got, where is it? So recording settings. So uh, 50 frames by 50 meg, 25 frames, 50 meg. 150 meg. So this is your slow motion, right? But the problem with this, it's at 720. So you, your your resolution gets put down to 720 instead of 1080p. These two here are 1080p, so 25 and 50. So you can still use slow motion with 50p. Um, but yeah, that's, so 50 frames per second at 1080p, that's the option. So you can shoot at that. If you're just doing interview, you can shoot at that. If you want extra slow motion, you're gonna to have to drop it down to 720. But yeah, there's no point. 50 is heaps, mate. Um, drive mode, so for shooting. So let's click into that. Oop. Drive mode. So we've got single shot, continuous shooting, uh, speed priority continuous, so it's extra. Um, self timer. So we can go two seconds, 10 seconds, like that. Um, self timer, 10 seconds, three images. 10 seconds, five images. 10 seconds, three images, yeah. Uh, and so on and so forth. I'll just leave it as that. Go back. So to go back, was when you click on that, it just brings you back to the normal like viewing. So, But to go back to the menu, just click menu. Flash mode, so this is your flash options. You can go through, click down to what you want. I don't use flash because on this is mainly used for video, this camera. Um, but you can use it for nice photos. It's only 12 megapixels, but that's plenty for your social media uh, stuff. That's, that's heaps. Uh, flash composition, so you can set that up to where you want it. Again, I'm not using flash. And there is no flash on the uh, A7 bodies. Red eye reduction on off, whatever you want to do. Um, page three. Page three of the camera menu. We have focus mode. It's, it's set to manual focus at the moment because the lens I have is just a manual lens. That's the lens I'm using at the moment on this body is just a manual lens. So there's no autofocus on a manual lens. But um, if you were going to go focus mode, you go. You can click autofocus if you've got a autofocus uh, lens. So let's just chuck one on actually, just to show you. To change the lens, there's a little button here, right there. Push that down, turn it, and then we get another lens. White dot here, white dot here, match them. Push it in, click it. Let's go back to that menu. So you can either go manual focus, DM, AFC, 
AFS. So if you're going to go um, autofocus, go autofocus continuous. And that's your continuous autofocus. On the A7S, the autofocus isn't the greatest. So yeah, even when I am using it, I, I never really use the autofocus. Well, I don't use the autofocus. I always use the manual, manual focus. But let's go back to the focus. So let's go back to manual focus because you're never going to use autofocus. I mean, you can, but it's not reliable. Autofocus area. What happens when you're when you're shooting uh, with autofocus? It, it gives you options, right? So you can either go wide uh, zone, so you can pick a zone of where you want that autofocus to be uh, to be to be uh, capturing uh, center, uh, flexible spot, lock on autofocus, wide. So yeah, I normally go center and yeah, all these options just just help the the system know where you want to focus. So wide, it pretty much just it it attempts to focus on what it thinks you want to focus on. Zone, so you can like go top, top right, top um, left, centerish, uh, bottom, bottom. Like you, it just gives you a zone, so it narrows down of where the system can start focusing. So it's a lot quicker and center. So it will always focus of what's in the center of the um, of the sensor. So go center, go back to uh, the menu, um, focus settings, autofocus illuminator. So this just is that little, that real red light that shines up. If you've got low, like low light, it'll um, come up with an illuminator, which is in here, right there is a, is a little red light and helps out, but yeah, it's... As again, we're not using that, so leave that off. Uh, exposure composition, exposure setup. So you go to page four, ISO auto. So you, with the auto, it's got a little option here. You can just cruise across and you can lock. So if you're shooting with uh, uh, ISO auto, it automatically uh, sets the ISO. So if you're going into shade, like if you're in a a certain lit room and you go to outside and the outside's more brighter it will drop drop it down to a minimum of a hundred uh, if you go into shadows it would it will br uh, bring up the ISO to 51 200 um, you can the ISO goes all the way up to bloody 400 so it's heaps but obviously just cap it out at 51 but yeah 25 600 is good but yeah, 51. You get a little bit of noise. Oh, well, you get a, a, yeah, quite a bit of noise at 51. It's not too bad, but when you got uh, your program, you can just go through and uh, get rid of the noise with uh, the noise reduction software. I'm not sure what you're using, but I use DaVinci Resolve. Um, the paid version, the studio version, has the the um, reduction, the noise reduction, so that gets rid of all the pixels distortion. Uh, so you can set that. You go back. Um, and then you can manually set the ISO. I mean, to manually set the ISO, just click on this where it says, uh, where is it? Uh, maybe start turning it, okay. So to manually set the ISO, you just start turning this wheel, like that, just start turning that wheel, and that wheel will adjust the ISO accordingly. So you can set it to what you want, all the way up to, Four hundred, four hundred. That's huge. But yeah, so you can do it manually, so it's not changing. It's just set or auto, whatever you want to do. Go back. Um, metering mo mode. So multi. So this goes back to um, the. So when you're using ISO auto, the metering mode is is what. Is what uh, your your the system is going to be balancing out that that uh, exposure. So it's usually so center spot. So with this, you can pick a spot um, of what you're wanting the the system to uh, set the exposure to 
I just use it, you set it to multi. So it's just pretty much getting the whole sensor, um, calculating what it needs to be, and it will set it to whatever you've got. This wheel up here, that's your exposure wheel. So if you want it to be a little bit more exposed, when, when you've got auto, um, auto ISO, it will bring up the ISO to make sure it's, you know, plus one. Or if you want it neutral, you can just set zero. If you want less exposure, you can go all the way three, not negative three. If you want more, it goes up to negative, uh, plus, positive three, plus three. So that's that wheel there. That's for the, that's your exposure wheel for when you're using auto. Uh, where are we? Go back. Uh, white balance. So with your white balance, so this is something that you should be doing as well. Don't use auto. I mean, I mean you can, but get in, get into the practice of setting your white balance. So daylight, shade, cloudy, uh, incandescent. Uh, what else? Fluoro. So you can actually. Whoops. Go back. So you can actually set as well. So set your Kelvin. You just cruise. So you set go into the Kelvin. Press across on that button and then up and down you can actually set it so you can set it to whatever your your lights are at my lights that i use at home are locked at uh, 5600 kelvin so you can go ahead and do that um what else you can go ahead and do it manually so why does it get so much Oop. So for this, you usually get a grey card, right? And go back to the white balance. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, so to set it manually, when you get your grey card, wherever you're, whatever you're shooting, so say if I want to get a white balance, I'm just going to get my grey card. Obviously, I don't have one with me, but you just put it where that dot is and it will get the balance. And that is the white balance for what room I'm setting up in. So that will give you a true white balance. So that's probably the most accurate way of getting white balance in each uh, location that you're doing. And again, auto, daylight, blah, blah, blah. So you pick one. Go down, down, down. All this is locked because this is for, um, all this is options for video. We'll go, so let's go through video. So I'm gonna spin this around for video. So let's go into the option. Okay. So picture effect is off. You got different effects that you can go through. These are trash, don't even bother. So just go, leave it on off. All right, so I think you can use these on JPEGs as well. I'm, I'm not sure I don't use JPEG, but go across. Um, picture profile, so this is for your video shooting. Picture profile, I've got it set to two. I've, I've just um, done my own. So I'll show you. I'll set my black level to uh, plus two, my gamma. So you can go through and pick what you want. Um, I've set mine to Cine 2. Black gamma knee, uh, color mode. I've used cinema saturation minus twenty. Uh, color phase plus two. Um, yes. Yeah. So I've pretty much got this same uh, setup through my whole, like using all my cameras. This is what I set them up to be. So if I'm using multiple cameras. Um, they're all set up as the same picture profile, so the color grading is just easier for myself. This pretty much just zooms in, so when you're focusing, it zooms in, and you can pick the location of where you're wanting that to zoom in when you're using the magnifier. Um, what is it? Long exposure on. Small detect on, so I don't really use small detect, face detect. Don't really use that because that's on. That's for auto, um, auto focus, but we don't use auto focus. Movie. So when we're in movie, we've got program auto, so it, it 
it plays around with the shutter speed, aperture, wipe, um, ISO, it does it all automatically. Um, aperture priority. So let's read that. Aperture, uh, adjust aperture to change focus range and background defocus. Uh, small value blurs the foreground and background and large value maintains focus for entire scene. So pretty much what this does, it uses the, um, so you, when, when you go on aperture priority, say we go on aperture priority, what it does, it sets, this is our aperture, f1.4. To change that, we've got a wheel at the front. This is the aperture wheel, okay? So you can just change that. And what that's going to do is lock the aperture. So this opens all the way up to f1.4. We can go with this lens, it goes all the way to, I'm not sure, 16. So when it's 16, that is pretty much everything is in focus. But the problem with that is, look at what happens, right? So I've got the, um, the ISO set to auto. Let's go 100, okay? So F16, what it does is, let's set it up so we can see See those blades right in here? Watch this. So when we, that's it, it's our F16. So when we open it up, that opens. See that, it opens up. So that opens and lets more light in. So that's now at F1.4. So we can let more light in. So more light gets let in, but the thing is, when we, we've got the aperture set to F1.4, whatever, is in that plane of view, or that focus plane, is in focus, but then as soon as we move it out, see that plane of focus, it's so thin at wave 1.4, so now it's out of focus, out of focus, whereas this here is staying, oh, it's not even in focus, let me get that focus correct. Okay, so that's in focus. My hands are in focus, and now it's out of focus, and it's even more blurry. So that's that foreground blur, and that's the same for background blur behind that plane of focus. There's a slim line of plane of focus right in here, and anywhere away from that is out of focus. To get that line, that plane, that focus plane, in, to increase that focus plane, all you gotta do is close the aperture. That wheel up top, let's go to, say, F5.6. So now, everything here, focus and now we're starting to get out of focus and out of focus so we're in focus here and through here so that plane of focus is increased so we want more focus that we want a more plane of focus that focus plane it, to increase so now we look at that it, that's all in focus all that there but again you're losing light so that's why we need the what is it uh, set that to auto and that automatically brings up our ISO. So we go F16, and all this is like all in focus, no matter what we are, we're all in focus. Okay, no one should on F16. See how it lights up in red, that's the focus peaking. That's the focus peaking saying that's in focus. And all that background. Let's focus on the background. It's a bit messy back there. I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> Boom. Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, at, all, at the moment, it's saying no card to get the card. All that is just the latch here. Just pull it open like that. And then just put the card in right there, the SD card. Close that. Okay, so go back to the menu, aperture priority. Oh, so here we are, go back to this. That's aperture priority, uh, shutter priority. So what it does is it, like the aperture priority, but this locks the shutter priority. So aperture priority locks the aperture and what it adjusts is the shutter speed to adjust the, um, to adjust the, what is it, exposure. So aperture priority, all that does is lock your aperture and it adjusts your shutter speed to get the right exposure. Your shutter speed, and if you set your ISO to auto, your, your ISO will adjust as well. Um, shutter priority, 
So that locks your shutter speed and adjusts your aperture. So your aperture closes and opens to get the right exposure. And if you've got your ISO set to auto, your ISO will also adjust to get the right exposure. Okay, um, manual exposure. So now you are in control of your aperture, your uh, shutter speed, which is this one here. It's your shutter speed. This is your shutter speed wheel. That one right there. Um, it's your shutter speed and your what? Um, your ISO. There. So you now you're in control of all this. That's when it's on um, on manual manual uh, exposure. So you're in control of all three. Okay. Steady shot. So this lens, this lens hasn't got uh, stabilization. So lenses with OSS, uh, optic steady shot, that'll, that'll work on this, on this camera. Um, but the camera itself hasn't got any stabilization. Uh, color space, auto, slow shutter speed, auto slow shutter. Not too sure what that is. Um, audio recording on or off, leave that on. Audio record level, so that's your record level, so you can turn that up like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and watch that level go down. One, two, three. So it's just using the, the mics that are on, where's the mic? I think the mic is here. Where is it? A couple of holes here. And again, you can swing that all the way up to plus 30, or all the way down. So when you've got an um, external microphone, so that plugs into here, external microphone, the red one, right there, that's your, your, um, your headphones, so you can listen to the audio levels. And then you've got your uh, HDMI and uh, your, what is that, the... Type A, I think it is. I don't know what it is. It's just your, your micro USB. But yeah, so when you've got a external uh, microphone set up, what you want to do, you want to turn your preamps down on this and use your preamps on your external microphone um, because that will be a better uh, preamp than your camera. Okay. Um, Page eight, audio out timing. I'm not too sure what that's for. I've never used it. Uh, wind noise reduction. Leave that off. This is terrible. It yeah, it makes the, the audio sound terrible. So just leave that off. Um, memory. So you can save your settings, right? So if you got if you want to have um, settings for your like you got one and two here, so you can use one and two, so you can actually set it up as um, like your different different settings. So say if you want to go, um, you want to shoot your 25 frames per second, you can set that to one. If you want to set your slow slow motion, uh, what is that, the 50 frames per second, you can set that at two or whatever you want to do. You can set that and save it. Um, that's your memory. So every time you click one and two on this wheel, it'll choose whatever one you've saved, whatever settings to. Okay, go to uh, your, so we're gonna go to the settings, um, page one, zebras off. If you wanna use your zebras, you can turn that on. Uh, where is it? You can turn it on and just pick whatever you want. So what zebras is, is it'll show you what's uh, exposed, so let me just bring that up. So so these are your zebras here. So now this is overexposed. It's just letting me know. And if I've closed my shutter, that brings that exposure down. If I close my aperture, that brings that exposure down to give me correct exposure. So it's just a helping tool, okay? Um, I don't use zebras. Which you probably should, because it, it is helpful. Uh, manual focus assist on. 
um, focus magnifier time so no limit so when you're when you're like focusing when you're focusing on something it zooms in right and when it, it when it notices that you've stopped um, turning your your focus wheel when it notices that you stop turning your focus wheel that um that focus that focus area that zoomed in that magnifying focus area stops and it comes back out to the whole to the whole picture so you can set a timer for that five, uh, five seconds two seconds or no limit so with no limit to for that to um, pull out you just need to give your uh, shutter a little bit of a tap and then it'll, it'll pull out to the to this full frame um, let me just Where is it? Uh, grid line rule of third. So for the grid line, we'll go. The so grid line is just these lines here. So that's your rule of three. So if you want to have something set up in the middle, you know this is the middle. If you want to have a uh, you know, have something like you have something here and have something here or have something here. Whatever you want to set your your object in your frame, you can use this rule of third to help you compose. So your composition, that helps you with your composition. You can compose it, something here, something here, something here. Whatever you want to set it up as. That's what that rule of thirds is. So you can set it up so it's in the middle. <laughs> You can compose it so now it looks like the picture's got it like a diagonal, so it's following this way. Whatever you want to compose your, your picture as. There's that focus timing. Again, it's just come on, but we don't want to need that. Uh, let's go back to the menu. Uh, grid lines, so now we're able to shoot with grid lines. Um, square grid, diagonal square grid off. I'll just leave it on, this is what I leave it on, my rule of thirds. That's for photo. Go back to video. Okay. Uh, marker display on. Marker settings. Center. Uh, so you can put your center. So that gives you a little center crosshair. So turn that off. I use it. Aspect ratio. So you can set up little lines. So with this one, what's that one? So it gives you like an old school framing. So you know, if you want to put black bars on these sides, this is the, you know what your framing is. <clears throat> Smaller black bars at the top and bottom. Whatever you want to set it up as. And sides. So on and so forth. That's probably like your normal black bars. So when you want to put your black bars in post, you can make sure that that is in that frame so you're not cutting anything out. Uh, I don't use that off. Uh, guide frames on so we can use the rule of thirds in this as well so if you want to have that rule of thirds grid in your movie mode we've got them turned on now so you can pose your picture so on and so forth <clears throat> page two audio level display so that is on that is just this little thing here that's just your little two channels so left and right and that's just what that is so that's your audio level uh, auto review so if you want to click review if you want to view your shots um, so it says two seconds so when you take a picture it'll bring up a preview for two seconds you can just adjust that to 10 seconds five seconds or off so if you set it off if you want to view that you just got to click well I've not taken it there's no memory card set up in here so yeah we can't view anything 
but yeah, to view, you just press that play button on the bottom right here. Uh, where are we at now? Display button, so you can set up the display button to whatever you want. Um, peaking high, set that to medium. That um, makes it a bit easier. So that gives you, so we, that focus, uh, peaking level, so high, you got more red showing on what's focus. Low, um, it only shows a little bit of red on what's focus. Medium, I find that's the most helpful for me. Uh, you can change your peaking color. So I've got it set to red. You can change it to yellow, white. I like red. Uh, exposure setup guide on or off here. Uh, page two or three. Um, zoom setting, optical zoom only. Finder monitor. So. This is your viewfinder. This is your monitor. Um, you can go auto, so when you bring your eye to this, it'll automatically go to the viewfinder. I never use the viewfinder. Or you can just only use the viewfinder, or you can only just use the monitor. I just use the monitor, because it's the what I use when I'm doing video. Um, people use this for photos because it's an extra point of contact. So you've got hand here, hand here, and your face is up to there. So you've got three points of contact, which gives you a more uh, steady shot but again, I don't, I don't use this for uh, photography. I have, but I don't, don't really. Um, page four. Um, release with that lens. So when you're putting a, a lens like this on, see, there's no, there's no uh, contacts on this. This is manual lens. There's no electrical contacts anywhere on this lens. Um, you will need to go to your menu settings here right and you need it in you need to put that on enable if it's on disable you won't be able to use a just the manual lens you won't be able to use this because the camera is trying to trying to find these um where is it i'll show you this one here see these little contacts right here the camera is going to be trying to find them and and yeah, so it won't let you use it, use that lens if it's on disable. So we're gonna enable it, so that will enable your manual lens to work on the camera body. Um, auto focus without shutter, yeah. Auto focus without shutter, auto. E front curtain shutter on. Go page five. Um, Ambient only, ambient flash. Um, reset EV composition. I, I don't really go through all this because I'm not using uh, flash. Uh, what is it? APS-C. So here we have APS-C size capture. So it's uh, set to auto. And at the moment, it's good because this lens here is a... APS-C size uh, lens. So APS-C, all that is is just a, it's made for a smaller, smaller, so APS-C. So this body here is a full size sensor. So the sensor size is actually bigger. APS-C is a smaller sensor. So when you're using a APS-C lens, which is this, it'll automatically sense that, hey, I've got a, well, let me change that battery. Nope, wrong way. Hmm. Go back to the menu. Okay. So I've got that set to auto. So it automatically finds what lens you've got on. So if it's a full sensor lens, full frame sensor lens, it'll say, yep, we're, we're, we're shooting with a full frame. If it's an, a smaller APS-C size sensor lens, it'll crop the full frame down to a APS-C um, range. So then 
because what's going to happen, right? Say if I've got this off, let's go back. Now we've got this vignetting around because it's an APS-C size uh, lens. It's not made for full frame. So now we've got all that, this, see this little, let me just close. So you can see all that vignetting darker. That's just the, it's, it's picking up the, the outside. It's picking up the outside of the hole. But I mean, this one here is a full frame, so it's nice and big. But yeah, so we want to put that to auto to automatically sense that we have an APS-C size sensor on and it will give us the correct crop on that sensor. What was this? Oh, I don't use this. Uh, lens comp. I don't really go, I don't use that. I don't really know what that is, so I don't really go through it. Um, video light mode, power link, function. So we can change um, the setup of your your buttons. I've never really changed it. I've just always used this as the shutter. I've always used this as the aperture. Yeah, I don't really go through and change any of that. Dial EV composition. So you can change this dial to something else, which is pointless because it's got the numbers, so just leave that. Um, page seven. Uh, movie button, always dial, unlock. Yep. So connectivity, so if it's got Wi if the camera body's got Wi Fi you can send to a smartphone, you just gotta download the right um so I don't think this camera has Wi Fi to be honest. But other cameras do have Wi Fi so you can just use that. Um airplane mode off. Airplane mode on. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it on. Save battery. So maybe this maybe this does have a uh, Wi Fi, I'm not sure. Um Page two, edit device name, so you can edit that. Just leave it as that, that's fine. So yeah, it does have Wi-Fi, and that's the settings. Application, so this is app list. So I've got these are the apps that I have: uh, Open Memory Tweak, Time Lapse, Play Memories Camera Apps, Smart Remote, Application Management. Open Memory. This is pretty slick. So with this camera, I've um, I'm able to with video. I'm able to remove that 30 minute uh, recording time limit. So now it's I can shoot up to 13 hours. Um, the 4K recording only works with the RX. RX1 Mark IV, RX100 Mark IV. Um, but yeah, so with this I'm able to shoot as long as I want. And like, yeah, um, as long as the camera doesn't overheat or as long as I've got room on my SD and as long as I've got battery, I can shoot as long as it wants. That's a pretty good app. Uh, just Google that app. The app is called Open Memories Tweak. So just Google that and you can install that onto whatever Sony camera you want. I think it's actually capped out to the, uh, what is it, A7S2. I don't think it works on the A7 III. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But it works on the um, A6500, A6300, A6000. It works on all that. Uh, what is it? Introduction. Yeah, we don't need all this. Viewing. And so you can go through and delete some photos. There is 4K recording on this, but you need a 
4K recording monitor to actually use 4K recording on this um, camera body. It doesn't record 4K onto SD card. Uh, monitor, so we're going over to the, the last page. Uh, monitor brightness, manual, so I'm pretty sure I've got that set up to the manual, so sunny weather, manual. So manual, I've got that set to the highest possible. Choose more battery, but yeah, it just makes it easier when you're in like bright situations. Viewfinder manual, so that's your viewfinder, you can adjust that manually. Um, Finder color temp, audio signals, title, so title, title menu, what's that on? I don't really, I've never played around with this. My dial guide. Delete, confirm. So when you want to delete, you can when you you can either choose um, confirm or not confirm. So this lets me have confirm. So I'll do that because you might delete something by accident. Um, display quality high. So you need to adjust the the quality of the display. Leave that at high. This is the display we're looking at. Power save start time. So if we're not touching it, this device, it will turn off within one minute. Power L and TSC. So I'm in Australia, so I use PAL because of the, the, the flickering in Australia. It's best suited for PAL. So when you're shooting with this uh, NTSC, you can actually get more frames. So when, you, when you've got your, um, your, your setup, it would bring up a um, the 1080p 30 or 1080p uh, 24, 1080p uh, what is it 60 frames. So at the moment I'm locked to 50 frames here in Australia with PAL. But if you're wanting to change, if you want to get more frames, just go to NTSC and that will give you 60 frames per second. So it gives you an extra 10 frames. But I don't really need it. Um, cleaning mode. So it performs an auto image sensor cleaning. So it just shakes the sensor to clean the sensor, which I don't use. I, I just clean the sensor manually. The sensor again is this thing here. Oh, oh, it's actually a bit dirty. Cancel. Uh, what are we looking at now? What's this? I've never played with that remote control off. So if you want to get a remote control for your shutter or your recording, you can use that and turn it on. I don't use a remote control. HDMI settings. Hmm. 4K HDMI, so this is for when you got the recording, the um, monitor recorder for your 4K recording. Um, I don't use any of this, so what's on the page four? USB connectivity, so it's auto, so yeah, just leave it at auto, that's fine. Mass storage, and MPT, PC remote, just leave it at auto, we'll automatically figure out what you're connecting to, whether it's just your charging cable or if it's your computer, if you want to, um, send stuff via cable. Um, USB LAN. What's this one? Yeah, I've never really played with this language. Date time set up so you can redo your date time area. So that's just the area, what country. File number. You can reset that. Folder name. Standard form, date form, version, you can see the version, the camera body, this is the, the latest version. So to, to update the, the version, to update your, um, what's it called, the latest firmware, just go to Google, uh, Sony camera, um, so Sony A7S firmware update, it will bring up to the page um, and it will 
tell you what the latest download is. I'm pretty sure version, uh, version, <laughs> version 3.2 is the latest version. Reset settings. So to reset all your settings back to factory, that's what that is. Uh, camera center reset, initialize. So I don't want to do any of this. So let's get out. And that is the whole walkthrough for all your menu. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown on the on the actual camera buttons. So again, you got your manual button, the uh, menu button. That's that's to click that. Um, C2 is your focus mode. So you can you can turn that to you can change the C2 in your back you can go back through the menu and change that to whatever you want that to be. Um, you got white balance right here. Adjust it to whatever you want. Um, clicking down doesn't do anything. Display on so the top part of the wheel display. Let's click that. So it shows you different display options. Yeah, so it just gives you different displays. So that's your histogram. Um, and yeah, so spinning the wheel is your ISO. This button here is your, so when you're shooting, when you've got this on M, okay. This button here brings up your shooting style. So if you want to shoot single shot, continue shooting, um, speed priority, that's what that button is. That's exit out. That's that button right there. Uh, function. So this is a quick, quick little menu brings up. So you can adjust your um, drive mode, ISO. Metering mode, white balance, focusing mode, flash mode, uh, focus area mode, uh, exposure composition. So yeah, that's that's your function button. So that's very handy because you can bring up your your main functions very quickly. Um, AEL, what a focus hold. Um, this wheel here is your shutter, shutter speed. That go, oh, oh, sorry. That goes all the way up to, shutter speed goes all the way up to 8,000. Yeah. Again, this wheel here is your aperture wheel. This is your on and off, this one here. That's the shutter button, so when you want to take photos, you just click that, click, click, click. Um, this wheel here is your uh, exposure uh, exposure wheel, so I've just got this set to zero. Um, this wheel here is manual, so manual shooting, shutter priority, aperture priority, uh, what's P? I don't know what P is. Auto, shooting auto, so the camera does everything for you. Um, video, yeah, so I don't know what this one here is. I'm not too sure. Oh, that thing that's your um, panoramic, yeah, panoramic photo, so you can just like get along as pan pan panoramic photo. SCN, yeah, I don't know what SCN is. But yeah, so I just pretty much use the video video fine and manual, manual for my photography. That's what I use. So video mode for when I'm shooting video, manual mode for when I'm shooting photos. Uh, what else? So you got your display button. So if you want to see what you've, like if you want to view your photos or your videos on the camera, you just click that button and then you've got your delete button. So you can go through and delete whatever you want to delete when you're viewing the stuff that you want to view. Um, on the side here, you've got your recording button. So that's, you click that to start recording video. Um, what else? I think that's everything. That's, oh, you got C1. So C1 is the magnifier. So that's my pan. 
<laughs> There's the zoomed out. Zoomed in, zoomed in, zoomed out. So that's just C1. Cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything, eh? Oh, that's the photo. Took off my pan. Yeah, that's everything. It's done. Okay, guys, if you got any more questions about the A7S, just shoot me a message in the comments. I'll get back to you. Might not be straight away, but it might be a day or two, but I will get back to you. Also, if this has been helpful, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'm trying to build that up. Um, but yeah, hope this was helpful. Take it easy. Cheers.